Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. My name's Terry, and in this video, I wanted to share with you some modifications that I made to my uh, layer cages. Um, I've been having an issue for about a year, year and a half now with these cages. Uh, if you look at the cage behind me, uh, you can see that the manure tray is awfully close to the bottom of the egg rollout tray. And what's happening is when you clean the cages, you slide that tray out and it's actually the egg rollout tray is actually scraping the manure off the back side of the pan and into the cage below it. So I routinely uh, do a thorough cleaning of my cages on a quarterly basis. Um, so I thought that this would be a good time uh, to go ahead and get the cages cleaned up and make the modifications to these cages so I can eliminate the issue that I'm having. Um, first thing I did was uh, take the cages out back. I pressure washed them, uh, pulled the backs off the cages, and uh, removed the flooring. Uh, when you go to remove the flooring, if you built the cages uh, according to the videos on this channel, um, the flooring was not glued in. Uh, it was just screwed in on both sides, and that was done for a purpose. Uh, if you ever need to make repairs or uh, replacements, uh, you just unscrew it and uh, unscrew in the new floor. Um, also, um, you need to re remove that uh, side support board. Um, that one I did glue in, but with a little coaxing with a, a rubber mallet, it popped right out of there. Um, so, uh, also what I did was remove the uh, watering cups and all the plumbing from the front of the cage. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the entire front piece off of the cage, off of the three units. Um, it was a, a tedious job, but uh, using a staple puller, I went around and pulled all the staples out. And then there's two screws on each side of that bottom support board. Uh, just unscrew them. And I did have to use a mallet because uh, I glued them in also to tap that out and break that loose. Now, originally, I was going to cut a couple inches off the bottom of that uh, front cage piece, um, but then I thought that it was going to mess up the opening for my J-feeder, and I wanted the feeder in the same position once this job was done. So what I did, I, I just pulled the entire front off the cage and decided to trim the top of it. Uh, I used a pair of side cutters and because I used one inch by two inch uh, welded wire on the front of the cage, I could just measure down the two inches and cut that all the way across. And I also cut the uh, top of the door down two inches. Um, I also, while I had this all tore apart, I thought that it would be a good idea to go ahead and put a fresh coat of paint on the uh, back of the cage, um, the side that's towards the birds. Uh, it'll just help you know, preserve the wood a bit, little bit longer and make it a little bit easier to clean uh, when I go to pressure wash it. And it also brightens things up a little bit inside the cage. Uh, after everything was tore apart and cut off the top of the cage, I basically just took my air stapler and re-stapled the front of the cage back on. And I also pre-drilled new holes and put new screws into the bottom support piece. Uh, another thing that's been driving me crazy on this cage is the uh, wheels or the casters that I had originally put on the cage. Uh, they were kind of small casters. Now indoors they worked really good, you know, going across the tile floor was no issue. But when I moved them outside and if I was to hit a small pebble or something, those wheels would actually buckle and the, the rubber on the wheel would actually roll off the, uh, the wheel itself. So I went out and I purchased new casters, a uh, little bit bigger ones and mounted them. And now as you can see, it rolls really nice across the floor so that's not going to be an issue okay so reinstalling the floors i had to get my wife to give me a hand uh, i wanted to make sure that i had the uh, front part of the rollout tray up tight against the uh, front support on the uh, front of the cage and also that i had the angle of the floor sufficient enough to ensure that the eggs would roll forward so once I got the, uh, the front of the cage reinstalled, um, all I had left to do was rehang the, uh, the water system and uh, basically just went out and got some new zip ties and zip tied it to the front of the cage. It went in the exact same 
uh, position that it was before. Even though it was moved up a little bit, it uh, was still the same position on the wiring. Uh, and I zip tied that in and then reinstalled the watering cups after I had disinfected and cleaned them. Uh, the next thing to do was put in uh, the trays. Um, I did come up with an idea. I didn't do it in this for this video, but I am pulling all my trays out. And because I'm getting a little bit of rust buildup on the trays, I'm going to go ahead and pressure wash them, sand them down a little bit, and then put a like a coat of rust-oleum on the tray. Uh, I think that'll just help the trays last a little bit longer and help the manure to slide off the, the trays when I'm cleaning them. Okay, so the last thing I had to do was fill up the uh, bucket and test the watering system for leaks, which there were none, um, and put my birds back into the cages. I also threw a sand bath in there to let them have a little bit of enjoyment after uh, get them riled up from pulling them out and putting them back in. So guys, I know this was a quick video, but I just wanted to share that with you in case you might be having the same issue. Uh, you can make these modifications and take care of that problem. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and you can get notified of any new and upcoming videos if you hit that notification bell. Um, thanks again for joining me. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next one.